At some point in our DJ career, we're gonna look to level up our crowd reading skills. Today, I'm gonna take on the challenge and I want you to join me. We're gonna master the art of reading a crowd in just one day. That's right, whether you're spitting records, speaking in public, or just trying to own a room at a social gathering, learning how to read a crowd is the absolute game changer. Let's start with something super simple, body language. People can't help but give away how they feel with small movements. They're gonna nod their head, they're gonna tap their feet, or move in sync with the music when they're feeling what you're throwing down. Kind of an unspoken language, and as a DJ, it's your first clue to know whether you're on the right track. So here's the trick. If their heads stop nodding or their energy drops, it's a sign that the crowd is losing interest. If you see the energy slipping, change it up fast. Try a popular remix, maybe a nostalgic track, or just a quick shift in tempo to get those heads moving again. A well-placed switch can save the night. All right, that was step one of five. Here's number two. It's the alpha trick. I love this one. The psychological hack you may not even think about. Every crowd has an alpha. Someone who is naturally influencing the people around them. You know them when you see them. This could be the loudest dancer, the one hyping up their friends, or even just that person everyone's paying attention to. Uh, the energy of the alpha contagious. If the alpha is digging your set, you're golden. But if they're disinterested, or on their phone, that mood is gonna spread like wildfire. So here's what you do. You find the alpha early on in your set. You lock eyes with them, gauge their mood, adjust your energy to bring them back if they're drifting. Once you got them hooked, their friends and the whole crowd will follow. All right, moving on to step number three. We're gonna master the energy waves. One of the biggest mistakes DJs can make is thinking that they keep the energy at a constant high. Crowds need to breathe. If you drop a banger after banger with no breaks, they'll burn out fast and you'll lose the room. We were talking about that in a previous video, why you shouldn't always be playing bangers. Uh, we'll link that video right here. But uh, what you wanna do instead is create an ebb and a flow, a wave of energy of peaks and dips. Kind of like a roller coaster. The highs feel better when they're followed by moments of tension or calm. So here's what you do. You balance your set. After a high energy track, you give the crowd a mid-tempo groove to let them just reset. Then as they catch their breath, build them back up with another heavy hitter. That keeps them engaged the entire time without feeling overwhelmed. Now here's a pro tip. You fade out the drop. You tease the crowd by holding back the bass just a little bit longer. The tension will build, and when you finally hit them with the drop, the room will explode. We're sharing five steps on today's video. Here's number four. We're gonna adapt to modern attention spans. Here's the reality check for DJs. Attention spans are shorter than ever. You got TikTok, you got Instagram, you got social media, and this has all really rewired how people engage with content. So long intros or drawn out mixes simply will not fly in today's environment. People want instant engagement. If they're not feeling it, their phones will distract them in no time. So you've got to stay ahead of the game and keep things moving. So here's what you do. You speed up your transitions. Don't let one sound dominate for too long. You switch up genres and tempos and vibes quickly. You keep people guessing and excited by adding remixes or playing snippets of songs they recognize from social media. A well-timed mashup of two popular tracks can make their heads snap up from their phone and put focus back on the dance floor. Step five, we're gonna focus on the outer rim. We're gonna read the whole room. See, DJs make the mistake of only focusing on front row or the most vocal part of the crowd. But here's where you'll stand out. The real test of crowd engagement lies in the back of the room or the outer rim. These are often the people who are harder to win over. But once you got them, you got the whole crowd. If the people in the back are still if their arms are crossed or not paying attention you got some work to do but if you notice them start to tap their feet or nod along with the head bobbing technique from number one it's a sign that the whole room is coming together throughout your set glance at the edges of the room make eye contact with people farther away 
acknowledge them with a shout out or, or play something more familiar to draw them in. Once they're engaged, the energy of the room becomes cohesive. And that's when the magic happens. Be ready for anything. You learned how to watch body language, find the alpha, control the energy wave, adapt to short attention spans and read the outer rim. But what happens if despite all that, you feel the crowd is still slipping away? Don't panic. Every DJ needs a recovery crate, a playlist of guaranteed bangers or crowd pleasers that you can pull out when things go south. This is your safety net. My top 100 crowd pleasing favorites. It's a free playlist for you right now. You can get it in the comments. See, you'll need at least 10 to 15 go-to tracks in your crate. Whether it's a classic anthem or a modern hit, these tracks are your lifeline when you need to reignite the party. Reading a crowd is about being observant, adaptable, and productive. Look for body language cues like head nods and toe taps. Find the alpha, make sure they're vibing to your set, control the energy waves by balancing hype tracks with breathing moments. Adapt to modern attention spans. Keep things moving and unpredictable. Engage the whole room, especially the outer edges. I'm serious, if you take these steps, you'll be able to read a crowd with confidence, whether it's 20 people or 2,000. And the best part, you can start practicing today. So next time you're DJing, performing, or even just hanging out at a party, you'll know exactly what to look for to keep the vibe going strong. Have you ever had to read a crowd, whether DJing, giving a speech, or in a social situation? I wanna hear your stories in the comments below. And if you're ready to take your crowd reading skills to the next level, be sure to check out my next video on active listening. It's all about how to understand not just what people say, but how they feel. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Trailer for the Crate Hackers. Happy hacking.